All right guys, so a lot of you have requested a tutorial on the fluid simulation that I posted recently on Instagram. So why don't you go ahead, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and let's get right into it. So I wanted to address something real quick before we hop into the tutorial. This will be available on Gumroad, so if you do wanna go ahead and purchase that, that's cool too, if you don't feel like following the whole tutorial, although it is a short one. Um, I wanted to address something, some of you have commented uh, about my glass shader, and I wanted you to know that I do have to make a living. Okay guys, I have to put time and effort into these videos. Um, I hope you do enjoy the content. I'm trying to become a better creator over time. Um, it's not easy, I do have to dedicate more time than you would probably think to a tutorial. I need to make sure everything works, I need to do multiple takes. Um, so it's, it's not an easy job. So I do have to charge for some things and I have a lot of side work, a lot of client work that I do. So I can make uh, make enough money to afford things like this computer and put food on the table for myself. So I just want you to know that I do put a lot of effort into what I do. Um, it's not easy and uh, I'm sorry that I had to charge a, a dollar for that glass shader. Um, if you guys really need the nodes and you really can't afford it, I totally understand. Message me, uh, email me, I will send you the nodes, I promise. So I just wanna make sure everyone has access to the knowledge that I do um, which is why I put out these tutorials. It's why I post artwork. It's why I do what I do because I really love it. So uh, I just wanted to address that and I know that everyone has a different struggle. Everyone has a different budget um, and that is why I have to run ads on my videos. That's why I charge for my files because a lot of hard work goes into that. So just wanted to address that. Um, and thank you guys for continuing to support me. It means a lot and I, I really do love what I do. It's very fun. Um, and originally I just started the Instagram page just for fun. Uh, it was just a stupid little page that I wanted to put my blender stuff on and next thing you know it kind of turned into a, a business and more of a um, less of a hobby and more of like a big part of my life. So I uh, just wanted to thank you guys for continuing to support me and um, this is coming straight from the heart. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's create this fluid simulation. You guys are gonna love it. Super simple, very fun. Um, let's, let's actually get right into it now. All right guys, let's open up Blender here and start with our default file. We're gonna be making everything from scratch. Go ahead and keep the default cube. We're gonna use it. Let's go ahead and select the default cube, Shift D to duplicate, and we're gonna go ahead and rename these two cubes now so that we can keep track of everything. The first one, we're gonna name Domain. The second one, we are going to name Fluid. You guys can call these whatever you want. I'm just calling them this so that we can keep track of what we have. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to wireframe mode here so that we kind of uh, can see everything a little bit better. I'm gonna click on the fluid box right now, pop this little window out here, and I am going to scale it down to 0.3, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and move it on the z-axis to negative 0.0, I'm sorry, 0.7. So as you can see, we have our fluid here, and this is going to be the container for the fluid, okay? Select the bottom cube here, our fluid cube. Go into the physics tab here uh, and give it a fluid uh, property. And click type, do flow. And then for flow type, we're gonna do liquid here. Uh, click on initial velocity, so go ahead and check mark that. Now this is where you guys can kind of have some fun. I, for this tutorial, I made the initial X, I believe it was 30. So that means we're gonna have basically a wave coming from the, uh, on the X axis towards the positive direction. Um, and you guys can play with this value later. You'll get different results depending on the value that you choose. Select the domain and give that a fluid property as well. But for the type, we're gonna go ahead and click domain. Now for the domain type, we're gonna click liquid and we're gonna scroll down here. There's a lot of options, don't get overwhelmed. Make sure liquid is select, right? And if it's not popped open like this, click that drop down. Go ahead and select mesh, mesh, I'm sorry. Uh, make sure that's check marked. Now this is where the real important stuff is down here. You're gonna see something under the cache section, right? And we're gonna go ahead and click on the type. Instead of replay, we want this to say all. Okay guys? Also gonna go ahead and make sure our resolution up here is set to 32, which it is, we're good to go. Uh, you can lower this and it will take less time to bake, but I'm just gonna leave mine at 32. And then I'll go ahead and scroll down here. Make sure is resumable is not checked, guys. And then change your end frame to 100. We're also gonna change that in our output settings. We're gonna change that to 100. We're also gonna make the frame rate 30 frames a second. At this point, we should be ready to bake. So go ahead and click on your domain. Go back to the little particle settings here with the fluid. 
scroll down to where it says cash and click bake all as you can see down here it's uh, it's working on all the frames it shouldn't take too long it all, all depends on the type of computer you have how fast it is all right so here we go let's see what we got wow look at that so I'm gonna get out of wireframe mode here and as you can see guys we're getting really quick results here okay we can mess around with the velocity of course but look at that we got a little fluid simulation so let me go ahead and play that for you show you what it looks like it's pretty quick uh, it's only 100 frames for your final renders and everything you're gonna want to hide this um, this fluid cube so to do that you're gonna go into uh, the object properties visibility and you're gonna turn off show in viewports and renders um, right now we're just gonna keep it uh, up so we can kind of see what's going on here but the final render you don't want that to show okay this is still looking a little pixelated so let's just go ahead and right click on that shade smooth guys and you can adjust your settings here um, if you have bigger resolution divisions you're gonna get a more realistic fluid simulation and it's gonna be a lot more detailed but it's also gonna take a lot longer to bake so keep that in mind I like these results we have, so we're going to continue with this, and we're going to start uh, adding in our plane, our lighting, and uh, some materials. Let's add a plane in here. Add mesh plane S10 to scale it by 10, and let's bring it down to negative 1 so that it's kind of right under our fluid simulation here, okay? I'm also going to take a second to go into our output properties and change the resolution to 1080 by 1080, which is uh, native resolution for Instagram. You guys can make this whatever you want. I'm just doing this for the purposes of the tutorial. Let's head over to the animation tab. I like having the split view where I can see my keyframes on the bottom, my final rendered view here. Uh, it's just a lot easier for me. So let's go ahead and click on the camera. For our camera, I'm going to set it to an orthographic view. I think that is a really cool result. We're going to go ahead and set the orthographic scale to 4. And as you can see, we're nice and zoomed in there. Let's go ahead and give our plane a nice material here. New material. I am going to crank up the metallic all the way, and we're going to bring the roughness down to 0.3. All right, let's set up our lighting here. Let's click on the light. Let's change it to an area light. Make sure it's a rectangle, okay? And what I like to do is pop this little window out here and just go through all the values and make them all zero. This way you kind of have a clean slate to work with. Let's set our power to 10,000. Change the dimensions of the light to 0.25 on the x-axis and 5 for the y. Now we're just going to reposition the light to where we think it looks nice. I'm going to move it up a little bit here, kind of back here, and you guys can really play around with this. I think that looks pretty good. We can come back to this later. Select the plane, duplicate it, okay, and we're going to give that a rotational value on the z, I'm sorry, the x by 72. Now it sounds like a very specific number, but that just happened to work out when I uh, when I made the scene. And we're going to go ahead and bring it just to the corner, as you guys can see up here, just to the corner of the frame. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to go ahead and put it there. You'll see why later. Duplicate the material of this plane and just make the base color black. And you'll see how this affects the scene later. Make sure you also set your world color to white here, guys. I'm also going to take a moment to actually select this right here and rotate it 90 degrees. I didn't like how it was sitting, so we're going to go ahead and rotate that by 90 degrees. Guys, before we go ahead and see our final rendered view and apply material to the liquid, go ahead to our render settings up here. Let's switch to cycles. I realized I had it in Eevee this whole time. Switch to our GPU. Let's go ahead and give this adaptive sampling a check mark. Go to our denoising, render. We're going to do optics denoising. I'm going to set my render settings to 1000. If you guys don't have the auto tile size add-on, I highly encourage it. It will decrease your render time by a lot. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and select the 256 uh, by 256 tile here. Um, everything looks good here. So let's go ahead and apply our material to our liquid. So guys, the liquid itself in the video that you saw on Instagram was actually my glass dispersion uh, shader. Um, so let's go ahead and apply that. You guys are going to have to watch that video to figure out how to use the shader. I'm not going to cover the nodes in this video. Uh, like I said, I can send them to you if you need them. But if you guys don't feel like following that tutorial, I am going to show you another really cool shader that we can apply to this liquid. Ready for this? Look how simple this uh, shader is about to be. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the shader I currently have on there. Create a new one. 
right? Principal BSDF, however you say it. Scroll down, crank the transmission to one, right? Go to roughness, 0.1, and then we're gonna go ahead and give that a nice blue color. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. And boom, you now have a somewhat looking liquid here. Uh, I think it looks pretty realistic. Um, you guys can honestly mess with these settings all you want. If you crank the roughness all the way down, it's going to be very harsh and glossy. But if that's what you think looks better, then that's totally fine. I'm going to keep it at 0.1. I think that looks really good. Let's go ahead and give this a test render. So also guys, I just want to take this moment to let you know that if you're going to render out a scene like this, always do a test frame first. So I'm just going to render this one frame see the result that we get and then go from there before I waste all this time rendering the full animation. And as you can see, this is why we do a test render. You see, I forgot to turn off that bottom cube. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on the fluid cube and go into our render settings here, visibility. I'm gonna uncheck render. Now let's go ahead and render that image. And boom, that is the result that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and let that render out. Looks like it's gonna take about 20 seconds or so. I'll speed this part up. All right, it looks like the render's done. That took about 37 seconds. I am running a GeForce RTX 3070 Ti with 32 gigabytes of RAM and I have an Intel chip. Don't remember the type of Intel chip, but this is the result. Uh, I think that looks really good. And you guys, feel free to play around with the render settings. Feel free to play around with the particle settings. This was just to kind of get you guys started. Um, so that you can create your own fluid simulations. Um, and if you guys want to see more about this topic, I'm still learning as I go, but I'd be more than happy to create more tutorials on how to drop objects into fluid, how to create different domain types. Um, there's so many settings that you can mess with. There's honestly infinite possibilities. But this is the tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I am here to help. Or whatever you guys need just let me know i know this is uh kind of complicated but to be honest it's not too hard to do right so uh go ahead and have fun if you guys make a render i'd love to see it i want to see what kind of results you guys get um other than that have a nice day enjoy the tutorial and uh have a good one